Mr. Danielson will be fi filming us today. Uh, so thank you for being here, Bruce. Yeah, so. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. My name is Brian Neal. And unfortunately, the case that he was alluding to was my baby boy. It was my son who died on that four-wheeler. Um, it was an unfortunate accident, and I accept it as that. Afterwards, some information did come across my attention that got my attention. And I, let me apologize, first of all, because I'm a layman, so a lot of the things that you're talking about I don't understand, okay? Um, it was brought to my attention that a priority one it's a life or death situation, and there is a time restriction. Yes, like, sir. I, if, if I'm not mistaken, seven minutes or less. Under eight, right? Under eight. 859, 90% of the time. 859, 90% of the okay. time, sir. And it was brought to my attention that my son's ambulance took 20 to 22 minutes getting there. And one of the statements that's been made to me that so many times by people was the fact that because of his injuries, it wouldn't have made a difference no way, which I think is a terrible thing to say to a parent. Because to say that really lets me know that you're really not seeing the big picture. You know, I mean, everybody in here, the, the most greatest nightmare you can imagine is for your wife, your son, your granddaughter to need an ambulance and it's not available. Absolutely. Now, as a layman, I do not know how policies are made. But in my mind, I would think that if, if it was up to me to hire an ambulance service, I would need that ambulance service to be up to spec. In other words, you know, like the Marines, the Marines say we leave no man behind. I mean, what is acceptable losses? What is acceptable, you know, um, even if it's one out of a hundred, who wants to be that one? You know, so as a layman, I would think, well, maybe joint forces would get get a couple of teams. I wouldn't mind my tax dollars. I, I raise my taxes if you have to, so that you can have enough ambulances available. You know, for this situation, it's 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 unheard of to call an ambulance and there's not one available. I don't know policy. You know, I asked you to forgive me for that, sure. but I need someone to explain to me. And let me say this first, because I've been accused of being, and this is terrible, as looking for someone to sue. I've been accused of, be, of chasing dollars because of my son's death. And believe me, it's insulting for someone to try to, to figure my motives. If I thought someone was wrong in this, I've been in court already. I'm not looking to sue nobody. My son made a bad decision, and as a result of that, he lost his life. There's nobody's blame. But the, but, the, but the fact of the matter is, there was no ambulance available. That's, that's the issue. Everybody in here in this room should be, should be worried about that. You have family. You have grandchildren, children. You wouldn't want to imagine them laying there needing help, and there's no help available. I need to know what decisions go into choosing the service. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Sure. How do you determine what service? What is the criteria whether this particular service has the capacity to serve the people? Sure. That's what I need to know. That's a big question. So let me first start by saying I'm very sorry for your loss, Thank and you. I truly mean that as a as a. I was a responder before, and I know um, I've talked to a lot of family members like yourself over the years, so I, I do uh, um, you, apologize sir. for your loss. Thank you for coming. It's very difficult for this board, and again, this is a REMSA board meeting. Uh, we don't, we're not privy as board members, as citizen volunteers, to uh, know the level of detail about your call, your son's call, or, or I do know, I mean, it was your call was in the media, your son's call was in the media, so I'm familiar with it, but I don't know anything about it. Um, we are not given that amount of information about you know, what happened in particular for that call. That's not our job. But to answer, I think, your bigger question is what goes into um, making sure we have adequate coverage and service in this city, and how do we choose an ambulance service? Is that a a good summary. Which should be all of our questions, actually. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. That's and that's why we, I think, why the members of REMSA sit up here. And I'm gonna. I, I hope that the two of you feel comfortable weighing in as well. I think it is our job 
we, we have the contract that you've heard a lot about, the ambulance contract. Um, that's the job of, of REMSA, the Department of Health, the City Council, to put together that contract and make sure that it says everything that we want as a city uh, for our ambulance service and evaluate those ambulance services. Mr. Major's service was one of the, the services that also uh, put in for the contract and evaluate all of the ambulance services based on a lot of criteria and score them. And we had actually outside um, professionals come into our city so that it was very unbiased to score that. Uh, and based on that process, um, we determined who meets those requirements and, and they get the ambulance contract. So that's how we choose who covers uh, the city of Sioux Falls. In a very, very, that's, that's my summary, um, doesn't cover everything. From that point forward, then this group, including this REMSA board, focuses all of our attention on making sure that, that whoever has the ambulance contract is doing the best job possible for the city. Do you feel it's working? Yes, I do. So the numbers that was brought to my attention, if, if correct me if I'm wrong, please, uh, I'm open for reproof and correction. So the numbers where there was over 600 instances in a, in a couple of year period, that there were no ambulances available at all, those are fictitious numbers? No, I, I think um, probably it's the misconception of the statement. Please explain what you mean. So in any community, whether that be Sioux Falls or Brandon or a community with one ambulance, there are going to be times when all ambulances are doing something, no matter how big or small. That's it, acceptable? It, it has to be in, in a system of care in any city. New York City, Chicago Fire, there are times when people are going to wait for ambulances. So Sir, you're saying, I excuse me, please, 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 please. I don't want this. I have a problem with remembering, so if you allow me, yeah. Okay, let's look See, at I just it. Yeah. Uh, so is that to say that there's acceptable losses? I don't like to consider it acceptable losses. What I think what we want to talk about is the full system of care. And so I think that, and, and this is a, a, a perception in the community that, that you have, because based on the information that you've been given and the rest of the community has is that if an ambulance is not there, the person is not being cared for. That's the perception I think that you may have. And correct me if I'm wrong. You know how many people have been telling me what I think since this happened? I, yeah, I, I want to hear from you because you're sitting here. It's not that because you know what? First of all, I don't really blame. I think the fire department, they were right down the street. They got there. So I know. I realized that my son's injuries were, he wasn't going to survive them anyway. Sure. I realized that. So no, my perception isn't that he didn't get care. Okay. My, the, the numbers don't lie. By your own standard, you say a priority one should be there. Let's just say let's, 10 minutes. Okay. It was 22. Sure. I'm not the brightest bulb in the, in the, in the you know, but that just don't add up to me. Sure. You know? Yeah. Maybe I'm missing something. No, you're right. You're you right. Know? And so that, that call, that particular call, and I get, I don't know the details, so I'm talking in generalities here. Okay. That call or any call like that would have been reviewed by the, the city's health, uh, by Julie, who is, um, Julie, say your, your title. The Emergency Medical Quality Insurance Coordinator. By Julie, by Dr. Luther, by all parties involved, that call was reviewed. And it's unfortunate, very unfortunate, that some of those more serious calls um, that there is a need to review those, but every one of those calls is reviewed. Now, is the answer somebody needs to lose their job or we fire the fire department, or the fire the ambulance department? No. Quality assurance is not about leveling a gavel against any one person or organization. It's about making sure that we're doing the best we can. Your question, I believe, is that should we be trying for 100%, 100% response time for everyone? And I, in my position as a REMSA citizen volunteer, and there will be people that will disagree with me, yourself included, that 100% is nearly impossible in healthcare in general. Whether you go to the, uh, the emergency department or whether you're waiting for an ambulance. But what I will, I want to bring back to my, what I was saying earlier is that care. Care is what you need to make to the number of when your son or anyone else had care at their side. That's the number we need to focus on. Not when the Big white You're right, I do up. disagree with you, sir. Okay. Because you can get all the care in the world, but if you can't get to the hospital, then the care, what if, what if they don't have on that ambulance the equipment needed 
to sustain life. Sure. So what they're doing is really, in a sense of speaking, futile if you can't get to where you into the hospital. Right. And, and I'm, I'm a layman, so I, I know I don't understand this, but is there a sense thing? Well, let's hire two companies. Let's let's make sure we got enough. You know, there's a lot of things that they take our tax dollars for that we disagree with. I would be glad to have be ta increase my taxes and use that to employ more services. Okay. Let's make sure. Let's not think that we're immune to what just happened to me. Right. That can happen to you. you. You know what I'm saying? This can happen to anyone. Whenever they say 99 to 1, somebody got to be that one. Yep. Who wants to? Nobody. So what I'm saying is, can't we do something to make sure that there's enough ambulances available? Even if it, I mean, if it's expensive, let's come up with the funds. Ask us if we're willing to pay more tax or whatever we got to do to make it happen. Sure. You know, it was my son this time. It can be yours next time, you know. I'm a, I'm a part. It's too late for me, but I am a part of this community, you know. And it's just, it's, it's a humanitarian type of thing now with me, you know. Do you think I really want to be here? I got eight children. I just lost my baby boy. The last thing I want to do is to be talking about this situation. But you know, now it's not even about me anymore. It's about a service. It's about your grandchildren kids, your kids. So now I have to take on a cause that I really don't have the energy for, but it has to be fixed. I don't have the answers. I don't, but I do know that it needs to be fixed. All right, so I appreciate, again, your comments and being here right. today. And, and, and like I said at the outset, um, I, we can't make any decisions. I you know, I'm, I'm not going to say, yes, we need to do this or that. We don't have that. And let me go on the record to say, I blame nobody. Thank you. I, I no do. one. I, I have the utmost respect for our, our ambulances, for our fire department, all of our first responders. What happened to my son was, a, was an accident out of his own negligence, I'm sad to say. You know, so it's not a matter of me blaming anybody the fact that he didn't survive, but the numbers don't lie. Sure. No, I appreciate that. Thank you for saying that because, sure. um, you know, we want to make sure that, that we're, we don't forget about the individual. That's very important. It was brought up at the council meeting the other day, too. We can't forget about the individual. So thank you for, for bringing it forward. Thank you, sir. Um, there, nothing can be done today, obviously. Okay. Um, but I rest assured that I will find out more information, and it will have to be at the medical board meeting because that's the closed-door meeting to talk about um, particular patient cases and see, what, see if we can get more information as a rep support. I appreciate and that. see if there's anything that should and could be done and we'll take it from there is that is that a Absolutely. sufficient answer today for right now yes sir thank you any, thank any, you. anything else no thanks brian don't come back now here what kind of morons run this outfit